Sitting there in that dingy office, she thought about what she was doing. 17 years old and applying to high school for the first time. She looked at the 14-year-old students around her. At that moment, I knew I had to make a choice, she said. I could submit to everything that was happening and live a life of excuses, or I could push myself and make my life good. She took a deep breath, put her pen to the paper, and began. Hi, I'm Garvin DeShazer, and this is your daily inspiration. From as far back as she could remember, life was tough. Her mother was schizophrenic, and both her parents were addicted to heroin. She and her sister lived in a filthy house in a state of near-constant hunger. We would do things like eat chapstick or share a tube of toothpaste. Sometimes we'd knock on neighbors' doors. She rarely attended school and moved from grade to grade only by attending the final week of classes and taking the tests. Despite her disadvantages, she had an endless curiosity and desire to learn. When she was 10, she'd found a set of encyclopedias in a dumpster. Since then, she'd been reading them every chance she got. At 15, she became homeless, staying with friends in abandoned houses, scrounging for food, wandering the streets at night. Breaking night, she called it, the Bronx term for when the dark sky grew light again. I'm just crashing at a friend's, she'd say. I'm breaking night. It became a way to make light of her sober reality. Liz, a friend, finally said to her, Call it what it is. We're homeless. Months passed and then years. Her mother died of AIDS and her father, still an addict, moved into a homeless shelter. And now, at 17 with an 8th grade education, Liz Murray decided to go back to school. I need a chance to climb out of this place, she thought. Everyone I know is just tired and angry and trying to survive. But I know there's a better world out there and I want to live in it. Even getting to school for her interview was a battle. The subway got stuck, making her an hour late. The secretary was less than understanding. Sorry, but it's too late, she said. School started three weeks ago and we're just about full, with kids who get here on time, honey. But she wasn't about to let this woman's disapproval destroy her dream. Summoning all her courage and looking her straight in the eyes, she said, I just need one chance. Seeing her sincerity, the woman softened. Take a seat. You can wait for the head teacher. After being accepted into high school, she found a teacher who recognized her gifts and was willing to help her pursue her goals. She earned a 95% average while squeezing four years of school into two. Daring to dream big, she applied to Harvard and received a full scholarship. Harvard's application had asked her to describe the obstacles she had to overcome to achieve success. Turns out it was a perfect match. That was when Liz discovered something even more important than the prestige of Harvard and academic success. A sense of purpose and belonging. After her story appeared in the New York Times, she began receiving support from unexpected sources. I didn't believe that anyone who wasn't my family or my close tribe of friends would be willing to help. But they did. For the first time, I could see there was no difference between myself and others. We were all just people. People, it seems, for whom the impossible became possible. People for whom homelessness became Harvard. How did Liz Murray go from sleeping rough on the streets of Manhattan to thriving at an Ivy League? How did she overcome the obstacles of her past to reach success? She made a choice. She chose to listen to a dream instead of her fears. She persisted one step at a time in reaching that dream. And she accepted the help of others along the way. What choice are you facing today? What steps will you take to build your dream? What will you do to rise above your limitations to create a life you treasure? 
What help will you enlist from those who treasure you? Declare for yourself now, I am a powerful choice maker. I am choosing my dream today. Thanks for listening. May your day, this day, be filled with love, laughter, and joy. Bye for now. Hi, this is Scott Sampson, producer for the Daily Inspirations podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Want more inspiration in your life? Check out our blog for weekend stories of hope and uplifting news. If you've been enjoying the podcast, we hope you'll take a moment today and rate and review us and tell everyone in your circle so they can get the same inspiration that we hope you've received today. We have big plans for this podcast and we want you to be part of it. Visit dailyinspirationsandmeditations.com to contact us with your own inspirational stories or just to say hi.